Well, I'm going to call Carol Schilliger. I hope I got your name right. You did. All right. And you have only 15 minutes. Okay. Oh, I'm not going to take that much time. I'm going just to read um, two poems um, that I've been working on recently. Uh, this first one is called B Concerto, Second Movement. Inside the drop of water, a warm winter evening swims. Warm enough that the future can be smelled in the yellow breeze trembling liquid skins. Just tender enough that the bees wing out of the preceding year on its promise, the bee balm springs. Four old doors jitter open on the dot to four minutes to gone. Orange-tongued and welcome, pheromones take on Sonata's form. But the women who dressed last year's vegetable beds couldn't be turned from their slumbers. And so the soprano's recapitulation could not be umber hung. Nevertheless, the winged tenors, the blue blow of the still tender petal baritones, and the colored crystals of the contraltos, between them, tissue thin sheets of time ripened harmonies exposition. And we, audience to the concerto, here at the coffee shop, Espresso outside in limpid winter, at tables clustered with spoons, <coughs> elbows and knees poke holes in thin skinned air. We carry on mumbling adjacent to this lambent majesty. Unbeknownst to our nimbling intentions, hands signaling building exposition, muffin crumbs wing lively than fall. Toward the wet winged waiting sparrows, feet that shuffle, head bending them to singing, feathered bells to sprinkle, and thereby our sleeping song slowly rousing. So I'm not, um, I like these two very good poets here. I am not a narrative poet. There are different kinds of, of poetry, uh, and uh, especially in Canada right now, this kind of uh, battle uh, between these sort of types. Um, all very silly, but interesting. And anyway, so I tend to fall on the other side, um, and I'm trying to learn, because narrative is important to people. People like stories. And I'm trying to teach myself how to sort of uh, combine the two in a way that feels still like Carol. So uh, this last one I'm going to read you is called A Little Light Magic. Cluster like figs along a trunk. Leave room for the gall wasps to edge by with their wings fully spread. We need them to light the fruit. They need the fruit to go from lone stinger to the marrying kind. And if truth were told, we too need the sweet orange light. Out of ficus, flesh we climb. In fact, we need them all. Who else would agree to hold our stories? There's light everywhere. We realize that, don't we? Too low for our eyes in many places, so we call it darkness. Wasp eyes see sideways of ours, this is perhaps why they colonize the inside of translucence. Imagine the world an orange glimmer. The transcendence that would describe. Such vision is beyond us at the moment. This is the case even when we stand under the fronds, eyes aloft, under the very fruit which windows our reality. In the cafe, hot in the stone square, in the center of the village, there is a paper lantern hanging from a twisted iron hook. The paper is yellowing with food and tobacco lifting up as it does into the evening. A dark paper wing, the bird body, a long-necked winger, an ibis, perhaps, 
certainly without a stinger. Bird body a deeper yellow than the paper buckling it to the pendant iron. The light inside falling forever onto the tables and stone, flagging human hands, lifting dried figs and cups of sweet Turkish coffee, hands that transport winged shadows. It is this, even when unaware, that gives the hands their ability to stir in the community. To bring wasps to table, to honor the stories they harbor, all of it would take, all it would take is to, in fingers, twist paper or the strands of swooping light, a little to the left, to the left, more and then right. If we did that, could learn to move long enough in that illuminated space, tabled figs would come alive with light and we could finally understand it, what wasps have magic wrought in worlds too dim for beings with our poor eyes.